Okay, good afternoon. Let me know when you're ready. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, August 15th. Welcome to uh, the first meeting of the T3 Committee, Trade, uh, Travel, and Tourism of this new legislative cycle. I do want to um, thank our Council President, Herb Wesson, for giving me this opportunity to chair this incredible committee that oversees um, our amazing seaport and incredible airport that uh, both ports are going through substantial changes, um, increasing our uh, tourism opportunities even more so now with our Olympic bid moving forward. You'll hear more from our executive director, uh, Don Liu. I am uh, really excited about chairing this committee. We will soon be joined by Council Member Paul Krikorian, who's um, down the hall in another committee. But I do want to share my goals in chairing uh, the new T3 committee with each and every one of you. My ultimate goal is to uh, continue to uh, promote the use of technology to be able to deliver a sustainable city and solidify our position as environmental stewards and to improve the user and visitor experience um, at our airport and throughout the city of Los Angeles. Specifically for uh, the airport, um, it's important to ensure um, in falling in line with uh, Mayor Garcetti's vision and mission to keep the port on track to become zero, zero emissions by 2035, um, it, but do so in an economically responsible manner by advancing green technologies. Also looking uh, to increase commercial development along the LA waterfront. We've done made some significant uh, uh, strides in uh, moving forward on the San Pedro waterfront and the Wilmington waterfront. Um, ultimate goal also is to develop a Silicon Harbor in partnership with Alta Sea, which is an agenda item today. Looking forward to hearing from the port um, on the amended lease. Also want to bring industry and the environmental justice advocates together to reach new heights and ensure that the Port of Los Angeles continues to remain a good neighbor to surrounding communities while ensuring the region's goods movement industry remains strong. And also, um, I do know with the Wilmington waterfront uh, finalizing the, um, the, the design of the Wilmington waterfront, want to make sure that that project remains on time and on budget and ensure the port does everything possible to assist the San Pedro public market development to stay on schedule. As it relates to our airport, um, the LAMP project, the Land Access Modernization Program, uh, we need to make sure that uh, that project is delivered on time and under budget. Um, like the port, um, as the chairman of this committee, it's important to make sure that uh, the airport is a good neighbor to the surrounding communities. We also want to continue the, the, the airport's um, efforts in ensuring that they enhance the passenger experience at LAX. Um, also, also um, moving forward and optimizing airport experience through technology and increase alternative modes of transportation to and from LAX. Um, the Department Convention and Tourism Department, you'll soon hear from our, our General Manager, Don Liu. This is an incredible industry. Our tourism is our number one industry in, this, uh, in our city. Um, now, this, we all know, moving forward, um, Lima, Peru is uh, in Oct on September 13th. The tripartite will be um, signed by Paris, L.A. and the IOC. Uh, the region needs to be prepared to host thousands of international visitors for the 2028 Olympics. Um, it's also important uh, we have appropriate wayfinding and information kiosk centers throughout our city and also... It's important that we coordinate our efforts between our um, neighboring cities on visitor information. Los Angeles um, needs to have a, um, a plan to leverage the worldwide media in preparation for the 28 Olympics that will come from hosting the 28 Olympics and increase the competitiveness, competitiveness uh, and ranking of LA as a convention market. Um, we need to work with Doan and his team to continue to promote tourism to Southern California's region as a whole and develop um, identity marketing and branding of this great city. It's also important to look at uh, finding ways to work with our neighboring cities, looking at equal representation, promotion of communities, uh, not only throughout uh, this region, but also communities within the city of Los Angeles. So with that, 
again, um, it's a great opportunity to chair uh, T3 moving forward and looking forward to working with our staff here seated at the table. Um, I do have uh, my policy director, Dennis Gleason, my port liaison, Anna Dragon, uh, your go-to here uh, on CD15 staff, and um, my colleagues on this committee, uh, Mike Bonin and Paul Krikorian, uh, two um, amazing LA leaders um, who, too, want to do what's right for this committee and this city as a whole. So with that, um, before I ask our general manager, Don Lou, to come forward, I um, want to recognize our port uh, director, Gene Soroka, who just um, joined us. Um, Mr. Soroka, thank you so much, Gene, for joining us. Um, I know you're here on an item, but um, I look forward to working with you and your um, team. Uh, you've, you've been an amazing leader for our port. Um, I call you um, America's port director, and um, you have the, um, the knowledge, the ability to uh, move this port in the right direction, continue to be a good neighbor, and I'm looking forward to having you come to this committee to give your quarterly report. Um, so before I call and take up item number one, I do want to um, recognize, or I will hold off on Ms. Neal. Oh, okay, fantastic. Mom's here? Yep. Great. <laughs> Important that mom's here. It's a special recognition. <laughs> on behalf of Mike Bonin. So if I can call forward um, Ayana uh, Neal and um, give her a round of applause. I want to recognize her. Come on. <laughs> on behalf of Mike Bonin. Um, Herman, please don't interrupt the meeting, okay? Don't disrupt this meeting with those noise, with that noise, okay? You will be, you'll be asked to leave. So Ms. Neal, um, get my notes here. We have, uh, you've done amazing work on behalf of the um, uh, Los Angeles World Airport. She's been working uh, to protect native plants on the LAX dunes. And um, Ayana founded a nonprofit, Friends of the LAX Dunes, which coordinates monthly cleanups in the northern portion of the dunes. She's volunteered herself more than 150 hours and was instrumental in coordinating volunteers to clean the dunes and fundraise for the tools necessary to complete the service work. And as a result, there's been an increase of native plants in the area, which supports um, an endangered species, the El Segundo blue butterfly, which in San Pedro, we are blessed to have our blue butterflies as well. Um, very impressive individual. She's an L.A. Milken and Coca-Cola plate forward scholar. She's a recipient of the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest attainable rank in the Girl Scouts. She's um, been featured in ABC7 News uh, in their series of Teen Community Service Leaders. So we thank you for your service uh, to um, uh, the environment that I know you, it's important for you to protect our environment. And on behalf of the Blue Butterflies, uh, we thank you for the hard work that you're doing for this great city and the surrounding communities of the Los Angeles World Airports. And on behalf of Councilmember Mike Bonin and our city, we recognize you and uh, give you a token of our appreciation um, by offering this certificate of appreciation. On behalf of the city of Los Angeles, pleased to recognize you for your leadership, outstanding commitment to preserving the LAX dunes. Your support and leadership has made a significant difference in preserving the LAX dunes, not only for the El Segundo butterflies, blue butterflies, but over 9,000 species of plants and animals. Thank you for making our city a better place to which to live, work, and visit. We recognize you, and we recognize the work, and we also recognize mom here. Yeah. Is mom and dad here too? Mom? Yeah, mom and oh, dad. mom and dad. Let's give her a round of applause. Ayana, Ayana Neal. Congratulations, Mom and Dad, as well. Starts at home. Okay, we have our acting clerk, Michael Espinoza. So if you're watching uh, over the weekend, Sunday, we, uh, the, the Port of Los Angeles, in partnership with, the Port, with, the, with Metro and my office, hosted Sick La Via. I, I mean, it was an incredible, uh, thousands of, of visitors came down to experience the port uh, on bikes, on scooters, and in Michael Espinoza's case, on skates. Uh, 
Rollerblades. He had rollerblades out there, 14 miles, seven miles each direction from San Pedro to Wilmington. I was impressed to see you and, and many other city staff members out there, part of the team, the, the, the city family, uh, rollerblading. And would you tell me when we started this committee, that experience that you, uh, well, that you had? It's just one of the best ones. I've been to almost every one of them, and that was truly, the waterfront is just amazing. There's just so many things to see. Fantastic. So thank you for that. So we're on the move, thanks to our, our, port, our partnership with the Port of Los Angeles and Gene and his team. And um, Don Liu, who was very active in landing Ciclavia uh, along the port as the, uh, then the deputy executive director of the port. So thank you, Don. So with that, item number one. Item number one, um, the executive director of the Department of um, Convention and Tourism Development will report relative to the status of department activities. Mr. Liu, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be uh, the first item for the very first committee meeting. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, working with you and look forward to many years uh, of working on uh, tourism issues facing the city uh, and also working with your staff, who uh, I know very well. Yes. And uh, uh, they instructed me to be general today, um, and so I'm taking a very high level view of our department, but look forward to coming on a regular basis, at least quarterly, to update you on um, uh, a deeper dive on some of our metrics and, uh, and our statistics. Thank you. Um, CTD's vision, uh, the, I should say, the uh, Convention and Tourism Development Department, our, our vision is to drive economic development and job creation by increasing the competitiveness of our city as a convention and tourist destination. Um, this strategy is driven by four pillars um, uh, that are in different phases of completion. Um, the first was privatization of the LACC operations, which we did uh, about three years ago in privatizing the operations of the convention center and contracting with AEG facilities, who now uh, manage and operate the convention center on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's also the, ex we executed our new governance model uh, so we were formerly the convention center department, and that's uh, now about half of what we are responsible for. We are also are responsible for our contract with the LA Tourist, Tourism and Convention Board, or LATCB. Uh, in prior years, uh, they were contracted directly by the CAO's office. And in this new governance model, when the new department was created three years ago, uh, that relationship was shifted to this new department. Um, our, th our third uh, pillar, if you will, is the expansion and modernization of the LA Convention Center. And we are in the midst of negotiating uh, with our AAG partners uh, an opportunity of uh, expanding and modernizing the Convention Center. Uh, those negotiations, negotiations are being led by our CLA, and uh, we're told that uh, uh, some resolution is imminent, so we're looking mm, forward to, uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then lastly, uh, uh, our, our fourth pillar is the promotion of hotel development, uh, in particular, uh, hotel development within walking distance of the convention center. So we currently have about 4,000, 5,000 rooms within walking distance, within three quarters of a mile of the convention center. The mayor set a goal for 8,000 rooms, uh, within walking distance by 2020, so we're we're on pace to to, to get there, get very close. Um, in comparison, I'll show you some uh, stats later. But uh, our biggest competitor is San Francisco. They have 21,000 rooms within mm. walking distance wow. of, their, of the Moscone Center. Mm. Um, here's a very simple org chart, um, if you will. But uh, this explains uh, our relationship and the new kind of focus of the department. Um, I would say we suffer from a bit of a inferiority complex because we've been known for so long as the convention center department. Uh, but this new responsibility is very large. Uh, responsibility for our uh, roughly $20 million contract with uh, LA Tourism. And so uh, 
uh, this chart shows that we manage not only the contract with AEG to run the convention center, but also a contract with tourism and the, the tourism and convention board to uh, not only market uh, and sell the convention center, but to market and sell the city of Los Angeles. Okay. I'm sorry, go back to that last slide. Yep. The LA Tourism Convention Board that in, where are we at on the contract with the city on, on their contract? It's an agreement, right, that we have. With so them. yeah, we're, uh, we're in the fourth year of a five year contract. Okay. And so we'll be uh, uh, up for renewal again in 2018. So 2018, yeah. expected to come here. It, oh, yeah, and you know, they've been our convention and visitor board for uh, over 25 years, maybe mm -hmm. 30 years. Um, one of the goals that the mayor set for uh, our department when it was formed three years ago was to reach uh, 50 million annual visitors uh, by the year 2020. Uh, last year, we had an exceptional year and, and uh, welcomed 47.3 million visitors to the city. And um, so you can see with just 1.4% uh, growth over the next four years, we should be able to hit that 50 million, 50 million visitor target uh, uh, pretty easily. A, a big component or an important component of the, uh, of the 50 million uh, goal uh, is international visitation. And uh, we were proud uh, to break 7 million international visitors uh, last year in 2016. Uh, and in and a subset of that, uh, we were the first U.S. city to welcome more than a million visitors from China. Hmm. Um, these international visitors are very important because they tend to stay longer and spend more money while they're here. And so they have a much uh, greater economic impact when they come to visit. Um, obviously, our biggest... Uh, 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 country uh, visiting is Mexico, followed by China, Canada, Australia, and the UK. All of this goes to uh, the bottom line for the city. Um, this is the uh, trans transient occupancy tax, or the, the hotel bed tax. Um, it is currently at about 14%, um, and uh, it's uh, been able to generate uh, 230 million in fiscal year 2016, uh, a 13.8% increase over the prior year. So it's a substantial contributor to the city's general fund. Um, and uh, I should add that it funds our department as well. So we're not a general fund reliant department. Um, in my very small department of 10 people uh, and a million and a half dollar budget is, is funded through the, the TOT that uh, we collect. We're also responsible for um, uh, about a half million jobs in, in, in the region. So uh, 515,000 jobs in fiscal year 2017, a 3.1% increase over prior years and growing. We've also had uh, uh, it, it, a promising increase in, um, in, in our lodging statistics. Um, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, our average occupancy is now uh, over 81%, over 81%, almost 82%. It's very high. Um, uh, real estate uh, analysts will say that 75% is a good goal to have, and the fact that we're at 81.9% is very strong uh, for any city. Um, total room nights sold, uh, 11, 11 million uh, rooms sold last year. It was flat, but it's actually an encouraging stat because it includes, uh, or last year's number include all the hotel rooms that were booked because of the Porter Ranch incident, and which was almost, uh, I think it was 350,000 room nights um, because of Porter Ranch. And so... Uh, we were worried whether or not we'd be able to exceed the previous year, but even without the Porter Ranch numbers, we were able to match the same, the same uh, uh, room nights sold last year. And what's encouraging about that is the average daily rate um, and the what we call rev par, revenue per available room, has increased. So um, not only are the occupancy rates uh, uh, up, staying high, but the... Uh, the daily rates are going up as well. Um, that 
all is good news for hotel developers that we are trying to attract to the uh, Los Angeles region and in particular downtown. Uh, the impact on the uh, uh, or the convention center economic impact has been very strong too. Last year we had 31 citywide events. Citywide events are the events that uh, uh, re attract uh, visitors from all over the world and all over the country, and they're not open to the public. Um, they're uh, usually associations or or organizations or nonprofits that have their annual convention. And so we compete with cities all over the world uh, for these shows. Uh, we were able to successfully get 31 events last year. Um, uh, we also classify them by the number of room nights that they book. So a minimum of 2,500 peak room nights, um, 3,500 room nights total classifies them as a citywide event. Um, in addition to the 31 citywide events, there were 232 local events, which are typically open to the public, trade shows, consumer shows, um, uh, that, f that uh, fill in the other dates of, of, of the convention center. Uh, our total estimated economic impact from the convention center is $731 million. Um, and you can see what a big impact those citywides are. So 500, 545 million of the 731 million comes from those 31 citywide events. And that's because they're staying overnight, they're staying in the hotels, they usually bring family, and, and they spend a lot of money while they're here. And so you can see we had about 500,000 delegates uh, uh, visit last year. The other, one of the major goals that I mentioned was the expansion and modernization of the uh, convention center. Um, this is a simple kind of aerial of, of what we'd like to do. Um, you'll see the West Hall at the top of the page, the, south, the larger South Hall at the bottom. And um, quite simply, our expansion plans are to fill in the two, uh, the space between the two halls, um, essentially building over Pico Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, the two buildings are roughly 400,000 uh, square feet each. Uh, South Hall is a little larger, but um, they're in, they're not they're not contiguous, and so it gets it's it's, it's a big disadvantage when we compete against uh, convention centers like Anaheim, San Diego, and San Francisco, which have much larger contiguous spaces. Um, connecting the two will give us over a million square feet of contiguous space which will uh, allow us to attract bigger shows and multiple shows at the same time. Um, so it's, it's our hope to uh, have an announcement shortly on, on uh, where we are at the expansion. I'm sorry, don't, yep. There was talk of uh, even expansion just north of the West Hall across the street to Chick Hearn. Are, uh, are those plans, have they folded on those plans? Are they just, are just now mainly focusing on the, the center of well, connecting the two? The most halls? important um, expansion for us and for our ability to sell convention space is filling in that gap in the middle. There are plans that uh, potentially could expand uh, to the north and even to the south. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I think as we finish our negotiations with our development partner, uh, the next step would be to uh, finalize the design. Uh, and so there's been uh, uh, discussions about potential hotels, right. yeah. potential ballrooms, potential even creative office space in some of the adjacent spaces. Got it. Here's a, uh, a very general map of, of the hotel rooms within walking distance. The blue uh, shows the existing hotel uh, rooms within a three-quarter mile radius of the convention center. Uh, the blue box at the very top, number one, is the uh, new uh, hotel intercontinental at the Wilshire Grand, uh, 889 rooms. Um, total hotel rooms within walking distance right now, 4,637. 4, there are four hotels under construction right now, including the Park Hyatt at Oceanwide Plaza. Um, and uh, I think
think there's another 2,000 hotel rooms that are in, pl in various planning stages. Cool. That's uh, about what I have for you now. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have for me. Appreciate that. Thanks so much, um, Don, for your presentation. Um, at this point, I don't have any questions and looking forward to having you come back to us on looking at further ways to, to bring tourism dollars into our city. Um, one thing that's missing is a waterfront, <laughs> but this is good for us in the city. Hopefully we can grab some of those tourism dollars and hotel development. Absolutely, and, you know. and, and, and I should say, you know, our, our tourism focus is not downtown centric. Um, it happens to be where our convention center is, mm -hmm. but as you saw, um, only half a million of the 47.3 million visitors to the city of LA actually come to the convention center. Um, they spend a lot more money mm -hmm. and stay more room nights, but um, the vast majority of visitors to the city of LA um, are not conventioneers, uh, and that's a great opportunity. And, and they don't all come downtown. Um, downtown is uh, enjoying its renaissance and attracting many of these visitors, mm -hmm. but um, certainly the, the waterfront and Hollywood and Venice and the Valley and other parts of the cities are, are, are benefiting from that as well. Very good. I mean, my, my dream one day is to see a potential satellite convention space on the Outer Harbor um, with some hotel development in preparation for the 28 Olympics. And I know uh, Mr. Soroka's here, Mr. Gowan's here, and, and we're looking at studying that that those, that those site specifically for that use. For yeah, the, the, maybe a slight difference in terms, but conference space is, right. is probably what you're yeah, thinking right. of. And, space, and, right. and as we're seeing, as I'm learning in my new job here, uh, um, Hotels like to build uh, meeting rooms uh, as part of their hotel package uh, so that they can have what's called, what, what we call self-contained events. And so um, yeah. I think new hotel de development in your district uh, would benefit from uh, a, a lot of self-contained events if, if uh, you can encourage them to build me uh, meeting rooms when, right. they, when they build hotels. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Yep. Appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Look We're going to continue this item. Um, and be sure that we include this presentation in, on the council file. Still waiting on the Mr. Krikorian's arrival. He's, he's coming soon. We'll continue with the agenda, but hold, um, continue to hold item one on the table. Um, so with that, if I can call, let's hear item number four. We have uh, Mr. Soroka here. Um, I want to bring him to the table. On item number four, Mr. Clerk, if you can read that to, to the record, please. Item number four is the Board of Harbor Commissioner's report relative to the lease with Alta C for the Port of Los Angeles and second addendum to the certified environmental impact report for the City Dock Number One Marine Research Center project, creating a marine focused research, educational, and commercial campus on the Los Angeles waterfront. Thank you. I know um, Gene, you and your team have worked really hard the last several months to come to today. I really appreciate your patience and in, in working with our partners at Altice. And I know we held a, a special commission um, meeting last week. And I want to thank the port commissioners. We had Commissioner Arian phone in from um, vacation. And it was important um, to have um, the commissioners weigh in on this item before us. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And by way of introduction, this truly is a great public-private partnership between Alta Sea and the Port of Los Angeles. The premise of an urban marine research facility is one that we take great pride in. And this afternoon, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Galvin, who is the Port of Los Angeles Director of Commercial and Waterfront Real Estate, to give us a quick overview and in support of sharing with uh, uh, the TTT the overview for you to take a look at, vote, and then move to full council swiftly. Thank, Thank you. you. Mike. Good afternoon. Alta C is uh, is an important development on the LA waterfront, especially from the. Can you guys switch mics? I don't know if that one's is this one not working. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, Alta C is an important development for the Port of Los Angeles uh, for a variety of reasons, but but one that Gene really focused on is is the partnership 
between the entity and the organization of the port and how that translates into public benefit for the region as a whole and the community and educational programs that Alta Sea will put on. Here uh, on the map, uh, on the screen, we can see Alta Sea located at City Dock 1 in the Outer Harbor area of the Port of Los Angeles. Uh, it's comprised of 35 acres of land, about 225,000 square feet of warehouse space, eight berths, and 4,500 linear feet of wharf space. So a very significant uh, real estate asset uh, for the port and, and for Alta Sea to leverage into what we see as, as a diversification of use along the LA waterfront that can bring new jobs and new opportunities to the LA waterfront that will bolster the visitor serving operations and developments that we're planning in the near future. So project mission is to create a marine focused research, education, and commercial campus on the LA waterfront. There's a variety of project scope components that will be delivered over time. And, and the main focus of the restated lease here is to expedite delivery of the project as, as we know it today, to actually expand public access in, in the form of a, a new project component, uh, to reduce the cost, uh, which also helps expedite delivery for, for both parties, and in the end of the day, to get the same results, same potential for economic activity at the site, same educational programming for the community, same uh, graduate and postgraduate degree opportunities in the future at SCMI. All, all of those will be the same, but, but we can do this faster now and less expensively. It's a more feasible project long term. So I, I'm going to go through the individual projects here uh, through the slide, but, but we have existing project scope that remains the same as a birth 56, the engagement center, which is really the focus of public access for all to see and where all to see harnesses. Uh, the different components of, of the campus and shows the public what is going on as far as innovation and uh, research at the overall campus. The SCMI uh, headquarters, which is at Birth 57, uh, an integral part of the educational backbone for the Southern California region, which, which allows for local universities from the UC system, the Cal State system, uh, Occidental, USC to come together in one location to have their marine biology uh, headquarters there at the Port of Los Angeles in about a 60,000 square foot building. Uh, for 58 through 60 is the both for-profit and non-profit research and innovation hub and that, that provides earned income for Alta Sea so that they can provide the public education and, and community programming that, that is a requirement of the lease. So the port basically in this partnership provides Alta Sea with subsidized rent. Alta Sea takes that and, and provides and, and receives income from some of these uh, partners that they have and then provides the educational programming. So birth 58 through 60 is, is critical in that and also providing these, th this new job uh, base in the Harbor area that, that we do not have today, the innovation hub there. Verse 70 through 71 is a to be determined in the future. It's a project that is uh, estimated from Alta Sea side about $196 million. Uh, significant linear footage on the, uh, the port's main channel, and that's a future development that will happen sometime after 2023. Uh, the public promenade are significant throughout this and, and significant for the port because of our long-term plan to connect the entire waterfront through public access through promenades along the water's edge, and so Alta Sea will uh, take part in their development uh, providing significant public access through promenades. A new project element is a birth 57 and a half construction of a wharf plaza and educational pavilion. This is uh, important to provide increased public access to a location that was previously unprogrammed and to provide a location for the Nautilus, which is an uh, Alta Sea partner now, Bob Ballard's uh, vessel, which found the Titanic, to birth and to also provide an educational pavilion for, for uh, researchers, scientists to, to address the public in, in the view of the Nautilus behind them or other research vessels that, that may be there. So that's a new project component that we're, that we're seeing here. Uh, so I'm going to go through graphically and, and, and show the different projects here. So birth 57 and a half to begin with. This is the first one of the first components of the project uh, needs to be completed within two years of the effective date of the lease. So two years from uh, tomorrow essentially is if the lease goes forward to city council and is approved. Uh, this would be completed and so this is an educational pavilion you can see there. It's a stadium seating area where researchers can provide lectures, uh, the public can congregate. There's also a, an open space uh, or a, a, an enclosed space underneath the, the stadium seating and that is right behind the backdrop of birth 57 and a half which is where research vessels will be housed. So this provides a new open space as, as I mentioned and a new location for uh, the public to really touch base with what's going on on the research and education side. Birth 58 through 60, this is the business hub, innovation hub, as we call it, where there'll be for-profit 
and, uh, and, and not-for-profit entities that will be doing different types of research uh, for their various clients, and this is where, where Altice will really engage uh, the commercial industries in different ways to, to reap benefits out of the ocean. Catalina Sea Ranch is an entity that is there today, uh, operating the first aquaculture ranch off of uh, the Pacific shore right now, and they have already had their, their, their first uh, production out of that. And so that's a tenant that uh, is with the Port of Los Angeles today that Altice will inherit, and they will bring in other tenants as time, time goes on. Mr. Kokorian has just joined us for the record. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. Are you a fan of mussels? They, they, they're farming mussels. Oh, the other. <laughs> the mussels that are found out in the ocean. <laughs> but uh, sustainable seafood, uh, to be able to harvest mussels right on the water and sell those to our uh, local restaurants, and maybe both here and abroad. It's incredible. They also serve the function of helping to clean some of the toxins in the water right. as well. So Absolutely. It's, a, it's a really good project. Yes. Yeah. Catalina Sea Ranch believes they can turn uh, the economic uh, or the, 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 the trade flow around quite a bit by bringing in more and more domestically produced mussels and, and turn us from a net exporter to a, uh, from a net importer to a net exporter. Mm. So something that, that we see That's as impressive. huge potential growth in, in the future on the Pacific Coast here. Warehouse 57, which is the Southern California Marine Institute Science Hub. Currently, uh, SCMI, as, as we call them, are on Terminal Island, and this is a conglomeration of the local universities, as I, as I stated previously, UCs, Cal State, Occidental, USC, all together under the marine biology umbrella here, and they will create a new campus. I'll see we'll develop a new campus here for them to be the core tenant of at Bird 57. And all the UC, Cal State schools, part of this yes. Marine Institute? as well as uh, the Los Angeles City College network as well. Part of the requirements here that uh, over time, Altice has different uh, requirements to create educational programming both for K through 12, but also for uh, graduate and postgraduate work as well. So as time goes on, they have to create more and more curriculum requirements related to uh, doctorate work, related to graduate work uh, that, that is based on marine biology. So those are strict requirements in the lease that they have to produce as time goes on and as this site is developed and great feeder opportunity in STEM education throughout this region at, at all K through 12 education is a great opportunity to continue uh, research and education uh, beyond uh, school, uh, elementary and high school. It's yes, exciting. it is and an opportunity for the Port of Los Angeles to really tie up some of the current operations that we have go going on with Altice, being able to leverage uh, sponsorships that we're currently involved in with, with the Los Angeles Marine Institute, with our, uh, our aquarium down in, in the harbor area, and allow them to serve as feeder organizations as well as the Boys and Girls Club to mm -hmm. bring in students and also to create educational programming that Altice and that, that those organizations can both cross-benefit from. So the, the importance here really is that Altice serves as this central nucleus to all these other organizations that exist now and to build a more powerful sponsorship program for the Port of Los Angeles and giving back to the community. The engagement center is where really the public access piece of, of Altice is. This is a $50 million investment to create an educational pavilion for the public to be able to come in to uh, see what research is going on in both the, the commercial hub, innovation hub, as well as in the SCMI hub, and to understand exactly what Altice is doing with this location at, at the waterfront and how they are driving an economy out of the ocean. So a really important piece, of the, the most important public piece of this whole development and that will come in, in between the years 2023 and 2024. So in conclusion, uh, the focus here was really to find a better way to deliver this project, uh, to expedite development, which will activate the site sooner uh, th than we previously expected. So we'll have activation within two years. We expect activation to occur actually immediately, but full activation of birth 56 through uh, 58 and 57 and a half within two years. Increased public access with birth 57 and a half with the wharf plaza and educational pavilion, uh, equal scope of public uh, benefit programs, and equal potential for economic activity for the commercial programming there at Altice. So we think this is a great win-win for the port and Altice and the community and the region a as a whole to create this headquarters uh, for marine research at the Port of Los Angeles. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Sroka, anything? You're good. I, I, this Altice is a game changer for the city and, and for our waterfront, and any time the port comes to us, Paul, with restated leases that expedites development is, is a win-win for everyone involved. And really appreciate the work that you've done uh, in working hand-in-hand -hand with Altice, again, diversifying the workforce here. God bless our longshoremen. I've been looking at having 
a different types of, of workforce uh, in addition to the amazing work that our longshore work, uh, workers are doing day in and day out. And I believe this will be a catalyst, all to see will be a catalyst to complement the ongoing development that's taking shape along the San Pedro and Wilmington waterfront. So i um, been uh, waiting for this to come and looking forward to, to moving this forward. And I want to turn it over to Mr. Krikorian um, for any questions, comments. Great projection of all the work that the port has been doing, that you've been doing uh, in revitalizing that whole part of the city. So, congratulations. Thank you, sir. And I, I just also want to recognize, I know we have one card, um, uh, Jenny Crusoe, who is really taking on this leadership role and, and bringing um, outside funding uh, to help with the, um, the development of Altice, and she's been a huge champion of this project. And Dr. Ballard, who's been the face of Altice in the last year or two, with, uh, now docking his, his vessel there uh, during the winter months, and um, the connection between Dr. Ballard's expeditions and also tying it in with our K through 12 education system throughout this region is, is incredible. So thank you so much for your presentation. I do have one card here, and uh, this is Tim McCosker to speak on um, this item before us. Tim? Mr. Chair, is this the good mic? Yep. Oh, good. Mic. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim McCosker, Glazer Wild, representing Alta C. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this. I do want to take an uh, opportunity to say one thing about item number one, though. Um, uh, Mr. Liu was a, a little modest. Uh, we do have down in San Pedro a partnership with the uh, Sorry, Visitors sir. and Convention Bureau. And we have a grant to open a visitor center at the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. I stand state. corrected. I will move on to item number four. But it's really, really good news for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm sure Elise can tell yes. you more about it. Absolutely. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, Jenny uh, Crusoe would love to be here, but she's exactly where you wanted her to be. She's meeting with donors today. And she could not adjust her schedule. As you know, the most important thing now is to take this nearly completed lease and continue to do the good work that she's doing on funding it. Sean Jensen um, is here today. Sean, if you could raise your hand. He's our government affairs manager for Altice, and so you'll see and hear a lot more out of him uh, in the coming months and years, I'm sure. Uh, uh, Mike Galvin has done a terrific job of describing where we are with this restated lease, but the amended and restated lease really does put the port and all to see in a position where we've reversed some of the timing so that we go move forward with 56, uh, 58 through 60 components, which is also uh, a, a revenue generating component of the project. We also bring down some of the construction costs. In speaking to the, uh, the scientists and the entrepreneurs, it made more sense for us to build this thing smartly. And the, the, your, you. your staff did a great job of putting us that position. Can I make a couple of thank yous? Really quickly, quickly. I just want to thank Mike Galvin. I want to thank Rika. Uh, I want to thank um, uh, Heather McCloskey in the city attorney's office. I want to thank especially Gene, who before Del and Lou became a general manager, I used to say was the best general manager in the city. <laughs> now I'm just, we'll go unranked in the future. <laughs> but particularly, I want to thank the council office. The council office has been just a stalwart supporter of this project. So thank you, thank and you. we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. So, um, with that, um, without objection, um, we are you okay with this, Mr. Krikorian? We will, um, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. there's still the multiple oh. item comment. Oh, let's do the multiple. Yeah, the, uh, let's table item. this item and let's take. Thank you very much. You can head back to your seats. We have cards from Herman on all the items. So, Herman, you will speak on all the items on, in, for two minutes. Then you will also be allotted an opportunity to speak on um, general public comment, a non-agenda item, for one minute. Thanks, Mike. Well, on item four, there's no mention of an ADA consultant dealing with this so-called promenade public access for the Wharf Plaza as well. I don't know what the hell Mr. Mike, Gavin, and Gene were talking about, but you need to have an ADA consultant if this is going to be a learning environment. And it's going to cover what? Grades K through 12? There are multiple children and families with 
members that suffer a disability, some visible and some invisible. But that's only an item number four. So I'm opposing against this project until they can conclude that there is an ADA consultant meeting the ADA 2010 standard of ADA. If not, I will file a Department of Justice grievance under the ADA under Title II and III discrimination based on not having an ADA consultant for the project adhered to the public under public interest, safety, and concern. And all the other fucked up items uh, regarding to CD15, fuck all those items. Then I'm going to item number one. Regarding what? Situations of Porter Ranch public safety and security. Well, let me tell you about capital improvement. Regarding private and so-called private expansion, it's not in public's interest. Nobody wants the fucking Olympics because you can't deal with the multiple issues of homelessness here. Yeah, you talked about having how many multiple hotels and living quarters, but in Porter Ranch, it can't be included in, in the project. You brought those people in to okay, build the house. General public comment now. Uh, regarding general public comment, it's really fucked up when the airport has to use eminent domain to remove a 90-year-old man by the name of Mr. Parrish just so you could build your goddamn uh, transportation for people there. You know, Mr. Parrish had interesting stories. Uh, he had to combat the city of Los Angeles and the LAX airport in regards to noise, eyesores, constant, constant harassment and retaliation by the city to pollute and create an eyesore in his community, but the 90-year-old man stuck it out. I'm glad for Mr. Parrish. On his behalf, fuck all the white nigger Jews and those fucking genocide people who come in here saying that the genocide never existed. They're right. It didn't. That's why the Jews killed Jesus, because they're so fucking ambitious, greedy, and selfish. Okay, with that, now um, we can... I will close general public comment and the multiple item comment. And with that, um, with Mr. Kokorian here, we'll continue item no, number one, approve item number four. And if you're okay, Mr. Kokorian, take the following items and on. Mr. Chair, would you like to read these back into the record? Oh, do we have to? Yes, now that we have a quorum, please do. Thank you. So item number one was um, the executive director of the Department of Convention and Tourism Development was reporting uh, relative to the study uh, to the status of department activities. And the other item that we heard was item number four, which was on the Board of Harbor Commissioners report relative to the lease with Alta C at the Port of Los Angeles. Very good. Thank you. So with that, we'll continue item number one. Um, approve item number four. And on consent, if you're okay with um, this, Mr. Kokorian, take on consent items five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just like, do you wish to hold any of those items on the desk? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay, hearing none. Without objection, we'll approve uh, those on consent. So with that, um, let me let me dispo the port items. I have one last standing port item, and then we'll head over to items two and three. So with that, um, just had a couple questions on item number seven. If you can read that into the record, please. Um, and did you want to take item number seven on consent, or you just wanted? To oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, disregard. I, I didn't want it. My fault. I should have pulled item number seven. So, so no, not take item seven on consent. So item number seven is a report from the Board of Harbor Commissioners relative to the Second Amendment to the permit with SSA Pacific and Coast Incorporated. Anyone here to speak on item seven? Mr. Galvin? It's good afternoon again. Mike Galvin, Waterfront Commercial Real Estate Director at the Port of Los Angeles. 
Uh, item number seven is a lease with SSA, uh, which is for the uh, Outer Harbor Fruit Terminal. SSA operates the fruit terminal from December to April every year, and they bring in fruit from Chile uh, to augment uh, the domestic fruit crop that is that is harvested in between uh, in between May and Octo October, November of each year. And so it's an essential part of the port's infrastructure, a essential function uh, for the workers there, very good jobs for, for the LW as well, and an important part of the overall region's goods movement uh, process in bringing in these fruit during the, uh, the winter months. So the lease essentially allows for SSA to have continued operations there uh, for a minimum of two years, but up to uh, five years. And it does allow for seasonal operations only, which still provides uh, significant flexibility for the port in using that facility during the summer months when we do have more events and programming on the LA waterfront. So we have been able to utilize that for events such as uh, Red Bull Global Rally Cross and for a variety of other larger scale events that use the facility for parking and staging uh, depending on their individual needs. So we have been able to use that flexibility to our benefit during the summer months as well. Thank you, Michael. So. Um, Couple questions. SSA, uh, say after between years two and five, if they wish to go elsewhere, they won't be in violation of this lease agreement. That's correct. With notice, they can get out of the lease. Or if, say, a company wants to come in and develop this, this is a last, I'll explain to Mr. Corn, this is a last industrial piece on the San Peter waterfront side, which is also a critical piece as it moves. Um, fruits from primarily South America and also has longshore jobs attached to this uh, to this dock. If indeed this is, falls within our redevelopment efforts and the port can identify another dock space for the fruit dock, would there be any changes in this lease agreement? Would you go back to SSA and amend this to relocate this piece of, uh, of, of work to another part of the port? If we could find a different location, we could work with SSA, and, and, and I'm sure that they would be open to cooperating with us if we could find them a new location that was both utilization-wise equal to what they have today and that it works out economically for them. So that's something that they would be open to. They have been very flexible in all of our operations, especially in the summer, in working around the different tenant op operations we have as well as the events. So I, I don't think it would be an issue for us to work with them if indeed a different opportunity came up for that site specifically. Very good. Because again, this is the last industrial piece. Trucks come through Harbor Boulevard in time where we're, we're bringing in retail, dining, commercial development. Um, looking forward to working with you and our labor partners as well in ILW um, to bring them to the table. If indeed SSA can um, look at a, another dock space within the port complex, we don't want to lose those jobs. It's very, very sensitive to. Uh, losing those those dock work jobs as well. So looking forward to continuing this discussion, and I know, Mike, you're on this, um, as well as these other critical sites that are ripe for redevelopment along the water line. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I had on this item. I just wanted to ask some questions. You good? Yep. Good. Okay. Okay, so with that, we'll uh, approve item number seven. Send that to council. And then one item we failed to mention on the consent agenda is item number 13. So are you okay with item 13, Mr. Krikorian? Yep. Okay, we'll approve item 13 on consent. And that is with the amazing work that the Battleship Iowa is doing. Uh, look, looking forward to continuing work with Jonathan and his team, um, especially in preparation of Fleet Week. They're doing amazing work there. So I do want to recognize the port in partnership with uh, the Pacific Battleship Center. Okay, so with that, um, our final two items, items two and three, which we'll take together. We'll take item two and three. You can read those two items into the record, please. Items number two and three are associated with the same council file number. Now, item number two is the, um, the portion dealing with the communication from the Board of Airport Commissioners, an appeal filed by the city of El Segundo relative to the certification of the final environmental impact report for the Los Angeles International Airport Terminals 2 and 3 modernization project. Item number three is a communication from the Board of Airport Commissioners relative to the Los Angeles International Airport's Terminals 2 and 3 modernization project and consideration of the project final environmental impact report and related matters. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Samantha Bricker, Deputy Executive Director at LAWA. Thank you so much for having us. Um, wanted to uh, provide a brief overview of the Terminals 2 and 3 modernization project. Uh, we're very excited to be uh, here today to talk about this uh, almost $2 billion project, which is part of our larger uh, puzzle of modernizing LAX. I think you mentioned in your opening remarks our LAMP project, and this goes hand in hand with all of the uh, passenger uh, improvements that we are making to the airport. Uh, just to orient everybody, uh, the project site is on the north side of the airport. Uh, I'm sure you heard about Delta moving uh, to the north side to these terminals a few months ago. Uh, this environmental document uh, captures the modernization that's going to take place uh, in these two terminals. Terminal 3 has not been updated uh, since the 1980s, so um, it is well overdue uh, for a modernization and obviously part of our enhancement of the passenger experience. Um, this slide uh, gives you a little bit of an indication of the existing configuration and the proposed configuration. Um, the improvements uh, really consist of demolition and reconstruction of both T2 and T3's uh, ticketing, the concourse, uh, the, um, we're adding a secure connector between 2 and 3 so you don't have to walk outside of the terminal uh, and go through security again. Uh, we have additional square footage and floor area. We are also reconfiguring the gates um, and the aircraft layout in this area for more efficiency with um, 832,000 square feet of new building space. So very extensive uh, project and much needed. These pictures give a little bit of an overview as to um, our current conditions uh, and what we're hoping to accomplish with this project. Uh, in improved connectivity between the gates and the terminals, concourse, more lighting, uh, better concessions, uh, better passenger experience all around, uh, less congestion at our security, uh, checkpoints, uh, a better baggage uh, handling experience as well. The objectives uh, that were listed in the environmental report uh, were uh, really compliance with federal requirements, um, new and upgraded uh, facilities, um, upgrading our building systems, bringing things into compliance. As I mentioned, they have not been updated for almost 40 years. Uh, a lot has changed in that time. Uh, this will be a lead silver facility, so we're really looking at improved sustainability measures and efficiencies as part of this project, and really an enhancement of the passenger level of service um, and more amenities for our passengers. The CEQA process uh, started in 2016. Uh, we had a scoping meeting back in August. Uh, we received only 10 comments on that notice of preparation. The draft EIR went out uh, in February. We did have a public meeting. We received a total of eight comments. All of those comments were addressed in the final EIR, which was released uh, June 28th. And uh, the BOAC board approved uh, the project and certified the EIR uh, July 13th. Uh, we've also gone through the specific plan compliance process. Uh, no public comments uh, were received on the specific plan. Uh, compliance. Just briefly on our draft EIR and the findings, uh, we uh, were able to mitigate all of our uh, impacts uh, that were identified as part of the project, except for two impacts uh, that were in the cumulative. Those were traffic impacts um, that there were really no feasible mitigation measures, but again, that's in the cumulative uh, traffic impacts. Uh, the rest of the impacts were able to be mitigated as part of this project. And uh, this slide summarizes the actions that uh, we are recommending. Um, we uh, would like uh, the committee to deny the appeal by the city of El Segundo. We uh, addressed all of the comments raised by the city uh, in our uh, final EIR and in subsequent responses. Uh, as well as the staff uh, report uh, that you have. Uh, no new issues were raised by the city of El Segundo. Uh, all of their issues uh, were addressed in the final. In fact, their appeal letter does not raise any new issues and in fact acknowledges that we did respond to their comments. Uh, and we would like to uh, 
have the committee recommend to council to go forward and approve and certify uh, the EIR so that we can get started on this modernization project. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Before we turn to questions, I um, want to ask if, uh, are the appellants here, anyone representing the city of El Segundo wish to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none. Um, Mr. Recording, questions? I don't think so. I think they've been addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. So, um, Mr. Recording, I'd like to recommend the um, denial of the City of El Segundo's July 24th, 2017 appeal of BOAC's certification of the LAX Terminals 2 and 3 Modernization Project EIR and recommend um, on item number three to concur with the July 13th, 2017 actions of the Board of Airport Commissioners and resolution number 26299, including approving the terminals two and three modernization project, certifying the final EIR and related findings of fact and overriding considerations, mitigation and monitoring reporting program, and the executive director's LAX plan compliance report as detailed in BOAC's July 24th, 2017 communication to the City Council, um, which, read, which reads consideration of the LA International Airport Terminals 2 and 3 modernization project. Agreed. Okay. So without objection, that'll be the order. Thank you very much for your presentation. And with that, I believe those were the two final items or? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Did I miss anything? Oh, I'm sorry, I do have a comment, public a speaker card. Uh, Dana, Dana um, DeBell from um, Delta Airlines. Well, sorry, Dana. No, I, I, I don't know if you still want to speak. On the I will simply say uh, Dana DeBell with Delta Airlines and thank you very much for the support. Okay, thank you very much. Just for the record, sir, if you mind, just reaffirming your action. Not so with that, I don't have to read in the record. I understand that. So with that, we will, uh, with uh, the speaker card, we'll move the, move the recommendation um, and send that to council. So with that, we are, our T3 committee is now adjourned. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, sorry.